Hi, I'm Paul Coughlin, bullying expert and Fox News contributor about adolescent bullying as well. Today I want to give you some great advice on how to help targets and also how to figure out if a student accused of bullying is telling you the truth. You know, studies show that the number one reason why kids don't report bullying is they don't think adults, including teachers and related faculty, will actually help them. This, of course, isn't true, but that's their perception. So I want to help you help targets. As you know, bullies go shopping. They select more marginalized students who sometimes don't have a lot of friends as well. So help these targets realize the importance of friendships. Help them form similar interests with other students and if they have similar hobbies. Help put those students together. It'll make a big difference. Also, help targets of bullying reach out a little more than what they're currently doing. They need to initiate more conversations and more friendships. Encourage no public display of pain and anguish from the target to the bully. That is what the bully's looking for. If we can take away that public display of pain and anguish, usually due to domination and control, the bully will often just move away from that target. Encourage not just the target, but also the target's family to document, 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 especially when it comes to cyber bullying. One of the best things you can do is help that student screen capture what they saw and also tell you what they heard in that case of bullying. Another thing you can do is encourage all your students to support each other through what we call cyber supporting. Recently I was speaking in Plano, Texas and when I was there I encouraged students to cyber support one another. One student set up a Twitter account that only says positive things about his classmates. Within 53 minutes, it had 116 followers. Kids want to do the right thing. They want to do the heroic thing. We just need to give them heroic things to do. Also, we need to clarify about what bullying is and it is not. Bullying is not about conflict or misunderstanding or anger management, drama. It is victimization without provocation. It is the superior use of power with the intention to harm another person over a period of time and for no good reason. It's really about domination and control. Now getting down to the truth. As you know, students who bully sometimes don't always tell the truth. And I think we're being kind there. To get down to the truth, remember that attitude is everything. For example, innocent people usually are cooperative and even enthusiastic to work with you. When innocent people are asked what kind of punishment should this person receive, they usually recommend a more stringent punishment. When you ask a person who's guilty, they usually recommend a far more lenient punishment. Also, innocent people express anger from being falsely accused throughout the interview compared with people who are lying who only express anger at the very beginning of the interview or the conversation. Also, liars like to make themselves look small when being spoken to. Uh, when seated, they will pull their arms in, they'll pull their feet in. They will also speak in a much more lower tone than usual. And this is a big one. They will usually repeat the entire question before they answer. Innocent people usually don't do that. So these tips may help you get down to what is really happening in your classroom, which I know can be very difficult to figure out sometimes. As educators, you are just one piece in the puzzle to diminish what is most likely the leading form of child abuse in the nation. So just as it takes many different kinds of people to build the school, it takes an entire community to diminish this intentional form of abuse. So whenever possible, advocate for a more comprehensive solution that involves not just teachers, but parents, coaches, trusted community members, and other people of goodwill.